Open Sesame. It's time for the Sports Vault with Jersey Joe and Big Shot Rob. Yeah, Joe, I think the Knicks are going to win the championship this year. They're going to beat the Heat. Let me stop you right there, Rob. The Miami Heat will win the championship this year. It's back-to-back titles for the Heat. The 2013 NBA championship resides once again in Miami. The Madden cover winner in 2012 was Peyton Hillis. Peyton who? Running over the ends, Peyton Hillis is loose! Sprint to the end zone! Touchdown! The Jacksonville Jaguars has yet to win a game so far, Joe. I think it's time to unleash Tim Tebow, Rob. It definitely is. Tebow, looking to the left side, Tebow on the move, 10 yard line, 5 yard line, it's Tebow time! Are you kidding me, Joe? Alex Rodriguez will make more than the entire Houston Astros roster this season? I don't know what they're doing down there, Big Shot Rob. That ball is high. It is far. It is gone. You can listen to the Sports Vault every Friday from 1230 to 130 on WICR. Hello, Iona College. Welcome back to the Sports Vault. I am your host with the most, Jersey Joe, coming with my partner, as always, Big Shot Rob. And we've got a great show. Like I promised last week, no uh, delays this week. We're back in full force, and you know how we do it. Let's get right into it with a recap of last night's Thursday night game. You had the Dolphins beating the Bengals in overtime, 22-20. to They won on a big safety at the end. Camera weight got Andy Dalton. And just my points from the game I noticed last night was um, just Bengals, just, I don't know, they've been very inconsistent for me. They're 6-3 and three this year. They're still in control of their own destiny in that division. But I don't know, the Bengals, I just would like to see a little bit more consistency out of them week on week. Part of it, and Geno Atkins now, he has a ACL uh, injury, and that's just huge. I mean, talk about an important defensive player. He might be one of the most important in the NFL, and that's such a big loss for them. They already lost Leon Hall, so the Bengals have got a lot of things to overcome, and that's a pretty big one to overcome right there. And the Dolphins, it was a nice win for them. They were in their last three games, really tough last two losses. Um, I'm still not really sure what to make of this team. Uh, Ryan Tannehill came out and played very well. He hasn't played as good the last couple weeks, but this is a good win. They're four and four now, and um, that might have saved their season that win last night. But that's doing it for our Thursday night recap, and we're gonna get right into our Week Nine NFL picks. We've been rolling along very good so far. We've been pretty good. Had a nice week last week, and uh, let's build on it. So Rob, right off the bat, we got the Falcons and the Panthers. Um, this game, interesting, the line, you know, Atlanta's just been very disappointing this year. Carolina's a seven and a half point favorite, um, and Carolina's played very well the last couple weeks. Atlanta's just a mess right now. Matt Ryan has no targets he can get the ball to, and uh, I, I think I'm going to pick Carolina in this game. They've just been playing really well as of right now. Yeah, you definitely got to go with Carolina for this one, Joe. Panthers have really reopened this season completely. They're playing great football. Atlanta, they're very weak. You know, the loss of Julio Jones earlier this season versus the Jets, that's really been killing Matt Ryan. And you know what? I'm going with the Panthers. I love the way Cam Newton's been playing the last couple weeks. Really has been throwing the ball well. I mean, that offense is just clicking, and uh, Cam's playing extremely well, not turning the ball over. Um, the next game we have on the slate is the Cowboys and the Vikings. Um, this is probably the safest game for elimination pools. There's not too many great games, a lot of close ones, but... Uh, the way the Vikings have been playing, I would say this might be your safest bet. Uh, so, obviously, Dallas for this one. Yeah, you got to go with Dallas. The Vikings still having trouble with that quarterback situation. Although, Christian Ponder did play good last week. But I'm going with Dallas. So overall, the better team in this one. Agreed. Now, Rob, here's the big one. Uh, we were talking about this a little before, but let's get into it. you got the Saints and the Jets. And, Rob, I'm going to go with the Saints. I just think the Jets' secondary is just getting torched. The Saints' offense is moving the ball at will. I think they're not going to have trouble putting up points against this Jets team. Well, you know me, Joe. I'm the crazy Jets fan. <laughs> the crazy Jets fan, Rob, folks. I got to go with my home, my team. Um, plus, you know how it is, Joe. It's Geno Smith's good week. You know, bad week, good week. Yeah, you were pointing that out, and it really is true. You know, ever since week one, Geno's just not been able to pull together a consistent streak. He's had a good game. He's struggled. He's had a good game. He's struggled. So... If you do go by that process, he should have a good game this week, but uh, we'll see what happens in that one. The next one is one of the tougher games on the slate. Um, it's the Titans and the Rams. The Rams had a really tough loss to the Seahawks. They really, they could have and should have won that game. 
Titans are coming off a bye. Locker's a little bit healthier. It's about a top coin flip this game. Rams are at home, but I'm going to go with the Titans. I just am still not sold on Callan Clemens. He did play okay in the Monday night game, but I just think the Titans have a little bit more firepower here, so I'm going to go with the Titans. Yeah, I'm going to go with Tennessee too, Joe. Um, Kellen Clemens, I don't like him whatsoever on the Rams. I think he's probably the worst quarterback that they have right now. Um, the Rams, I don't see them winning. You know, last week, you know, it's a division game. You know, those games are always close versus the Seahawks. You know, the Seahawks should have really blown them out. Rams did play good D in that game. But I'm going with the Titans. I think they overall have better offense. Jake Locker is doing good this year. I'm going with them. Agreed. After that, you have the Chiefs and the Bills. The Chiefs have just been playing unbelievable football. Haven't lost a game yet. 8-0. and The Bills, Dad Lewis's uh, ability to play is still in the air. He's played pretty well. He's kept Buffalo in the games, but he's banged up. He's got a little roughed up in that Saints game last week, and he's roughed up, so still not sure if he's going to start. Um, if he does, they'll have a chance, but... It's, I think it's gonna if it's a low scoring game no Kansas City doesn't lose low scoring games that's just the way their defense works um, they don't turn the ball over I'm gonna go with Kansas City in this one yeah you know Joe this one's tough I'm gonna go with Kansas City but this one's tough Kansas City over the last couple weeks um I've seen a decline they're giving up a lot more points it's a lot closer to these games you know that was a close win against the Browns last week um the Bills, though, I think they don't really have that steady quarterback. They they need E.J. E. Manuel, so that's really what do. they need to win that this game. But he's not playing, so I'm going with the Chiefs. Overall defense is unbelievable. Absolutely. After that, Rob, you got my Chargers coming off a bye, going to Washington. Um, Washington's defense has just still been atrocious. Even against Jay Cutler being hurt, they couldn't stop McCown. Um, I think I like San Diego coming off a bye. It's tough when West Coast teams go to the East Coast, but I think they have an extra week to prepare for this game. Phillip Rivers has played very well. I don't like that Redskin defense, and I'm going to go with the Chargers in this one. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Chargers too, Joe. Um, last week, that Redskin game versus the Broncos, I've given up on RG3 after him throwing three picks in that fourth quarter. It was just yeah. disgraceful. He looked terrible. He had a hard, hot start in that game. Beginning of the game, played great. But you can't just play bad in that game. Um, the defense sucks. So, Chargers all day. Yeah, Rob capped it right. They, your defense does suck. After that, you have the Eagles and the Raiders, and this is a definitely a close one. Um, both teams, Oakland had a big win against Pittsburgh last week. Uh, Terrell Pryor played well, but their offense couldn't really sustain any um, any efficiency after the first couple of scores, and that worries me a little. I don't like the Eagles' defense. I think Terrell Pryor should have a nice day in this one, so I'm going to go with Oakland. I'm going to go with the Eagles for this one, Joe. All right. Um, Nick Foles is back. I feel Nick Foles has been very accurate this year. He's played great football. Probably the best quarterback the Eagles have right now over Vic and Barkley. And um, I like when he plays, the Eagles do play great. So I'm going with the Eagles in this one. Yeah, I mean, he has struggled to a point. But when he's been on, he has looked better. Um, I just don't know. I don't trust that defense. So I'm going to stick with Oakland. After that, you have the Buccaneers going to Seattle. The Buccaneers still haven't won a game. And I don't think they're going to win one this week as well. Nobody's as good as Seattle at home. Just the toughest place in the NFL to play, um, and they should get a pretty nice win here. Yes, Seahawks all day. I want to know how Darrell Revis is going to feel after going 0-8. Uh, yeah, game. should have stayed with your Jets, Rob. Yeah, shouldn't have asked for a contract extension. And they could use him <laughs> now, too, because that secondary has just been getting torched, and if they had him, man, the way that defense up front is, that would be scary. Yeah. Um, after that, you have the Ravens and the Browns, and the Ravens have really struggled this year. They can't run the ball. Flacco really is struggling to get the ball to his receivers. And Cleveland, a lot of people, I mean, Jason Campbell, he gives you a chance to win. He, he was very efficient last week in the loss to Kansas City. They had a chance to win that game. North Turner really likes Jason Campbell. I mean, the Ravens, I think they're going to pull this one out. I just think they're a better coach team. They have more experience on their team, but... I wouldn't sleep on Cleveland. They played well at home this year, and it's not gonna. It's gonna be a pretty brutal game, but I think Baltimore will find a way to come out with this one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Baltimore too, Joe. Um, although Cleveland, they've been playing all right this year. Jason Campbell did look really good in his last start last week, but overall, as you said, the Ravens are a better coach team, and this team is here to win. So I'm going with the Ravens. Agreed. After that, you have the Steelers and the Patriots. Interesting game. Pittsburgh coming off a loss to uh, Oakland last week, and New England 
they have struggled. Tom Brady is not as efficient. Um, he's still working it out with his receivers. I just think they're at home. They're the better team. Um, they should win this game, New England. Yeah, I'm going to go with New England too, Joe. I still don't think that the Steelers team is what they used to be whatsoever. They're not that team that used to go 11-5, 12-4 every year. I mean, Tom Brady has struggled, you know, with the interceptions these last couple weeks. But I'm still going with the Patriots in this one, especially at, that they're at home. All right, the next one we have is the Texans and the Colts. And a lot of people think this one's going to be closer. It's only a two and a half. Uh, the Colts are only a two and a half point favorite, which I find interesting. Um, I like the Colts. Andrew Luck, I think, is phenomenal. Houston's just been a mess this year. But this game, it, it could get interesting. I think everybody's going to be picking on the Colts. And the Texans, I wouldn't sleep on the Texans here. They've got a lot to play for still. They, they are a very prideful team. Um, but I, I'm going to go with the Colts. I just think the Colts are the better team here. Yeah, I like the Colts in this one, too. Um, Houston, you know, th their quarterbacks are not great whatsoever this year. Matt Schaub's really struggled. TJ Yates is not what everybody expects. And I think the Colts just go towards this team. Yeah, agreed on that one. After that, we have the final one to wrap it up. You've got the Bears and the Packers, and the Bears have just been a mess. Their defense can't stop anyone. I mean, it really, I'm really just have been very disappointed in that Bears defense. They can't stop. They really just get, been getting torched in the secondary. They can't stop the run. Jay Cutler is not going to be playing. Um, guys like for Green Bay, like Jared Boykin, have stepped up for the injuries. Eddie Lacy's running the ball extremely well. I think Green Bay will be able to pull out a pretty easy win at home here. Yeah, I like Green Bay, too, in this one. Jay Cutler's still out with that groin injury, and I think Aaron Rodgers is just going to beat this team. Absolutely. Well, that's going to do it all for our Week 9 NFL picks. And our next segment going into is since we're at about the halfway point of the season, um, a lot of coaches we're going to start hearing who are on the hot seat, who are in trouble of losing their jobs, and we're just going to go over the big ones who I think are in most trouble. Rob, the first one I put was Gary Kubiak. He's been in Houston a long time now. Uh, there's been mentions here and there about him leaving the last couple seasons or time for a change. And I don't know, personally, I like Gary Kubiak, but I do think the Texans are in need of a change. I really do. Um, he, They've had him there for a while, um, but I don't know. I think the way things have gone this season, if they, they really had a lot of high expectations, I think maybe it might be time to start moving in, the, in a new direction. Yeah, I think so too, Joe. Um, it's definitely time for a new change. You know, it's very sad to lose him. He's actually a pretty decent coach. This team has made the playoffs the last couple of years. But just with this situation this year, that's just it really killed him, and it's why he's going to be end up getting fired at the end of the year. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised with that one. After that, you have Mike Smith with the Falcons. Now, a lot of people, he has had a lot of success in the last couple of years, but it's been noted that Arthur Blank, the owner of the Falcons, was very, very disappointed the last couple of seasons when things didn't go the way they are. That's the way owners think. They always think that their team should be better than they finished, but I think he's really been upset with Mike Smith. I'm not 100% on the Mike Smith bandwagon. I think they've lost a lot of tough games that coaching is part of it. Um, they have a lot of good pieces this year, but I think the way this season has gone for the Falcons and it continues to go, uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Atlanta moved in a different direction next year. Yeah, I think he's going to be let go of Joe, too. Um, he kind of reminds me of Schoenheimer. Remember when Schoenheimer coached the Chiefs and the Chargers? Yeah. Going 14-2, and 15-1, and one, and then right away knocked down the playoffs. And that's why it's been under him with the Falcons. Where they've lost in the first round, or like last year, where they went to the championship game and got beat. And with ownership, you know, you want that championship, especially with a great team like this and with a great quarterback like Matt Ryan. But I definitely see a change coming with him. Yeah, and I mean, the next coach who steps in would have a lot of t pieces to work with. I mean, the hardest thing in the NFL is finding your starting quarterback, and I don't think there's any question that you can win games with Matt Ryan. So if they get a good a new coach in there, he's got some nice pieces to work with. Um, after him, I think this is probably the most likely guy to get fired, no question, Greg Schiano. Tampa Bay has just been a mess this year. Heard a lot of reports of an uneasy locker room. Not everybody's on board with the message that he's he's transmitting. Um, I've, I'm not a big Shiano fan. I think his my way or the highway attitude doesn't work in the NFL. And uh, if they keep on going the way they go, there's no way that they're going to keep him. I mean, 0-7 already. I'd be extra shocked if he was the coach next year. And the billboards are coming up, too, to fire him. Billboards, too, yep. <laughs> I mean, the greatest thing he's done for them probably, though, is to get them a good draft pick next year as yeah, a coach. Yeah, they've got <laughs> a lot of good quarterbacks in that draft, so maybe they should send him a thank you card. 
<laughs> but he's out. Um, yeah, he last year, the Tampa wasn't impressive. This year, they're just terrible. And um, he's the reason why Josh Freeman is gone. And uh, I really don't like what he's done. I think he's changed that home around the locker room. The chemistry is not going great. I think the players really don't like him whatsoever. Absolutely. I mean, you got to have a player, a players who are buying into what you're selling. And if the players aren't buying in, how can they respect the coach? And he's going to be gone. The next, the last one, Rob, is I could go either way on this one. I think part of me is it's Leslie Frazier for the Vikings, and he has had some success. I think that his career could be defined as drafting Christian Ponder, which I still scratch my head drafting him that early. Um, but I don't know. The Vikings have struggled. They kind of surprised all of us and made the playoffs last year. But they've been very disappointing once again this year. And I'm not sure if he, he might stick around another season. But I definitely don't know if this is the guy long term for the Vikings. Yeah, I, I don't see him as a long term coach. Um, I know they did make the playoffs last year, but this year this team has just looked really unimpressive. I don't know how they could be this bad this year. Um, but teams are shutting them down big time, so he's. I think he's going to be fired soon. You know, he took over that one year as that intern head coach. He did all right with them, but I'm really not impressed with Frazier whatsoever. Absolutely. Well, that's going to wrap it up for our NFL segment. We will be back momentarily, and as always, we're going to do some college football. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Pitches to Winder. Winder coming to the right. Cuts to the 10-yard line. And the Broncos will come ahead with score 20 just to get a tie. 